Everybody was telling me, you go to Kansas, that's in the middle of America, there are no Greeks there. So here I am, you know, I'm thinking, I'm here by myself. I cannot let obstacles look bigger than me. I have to stare them down. There's nothing I cannot handle. Paul Rachman. Rachman. How do we pronounce it really? Rachman. Paul Rachman. Paul Rachman. Is that your official name? Yes, my legal name, because I changed it when I became a citizen in 1990. But you were Greek originally. Correct. How was your name in Greek? Rachmanidis. And your first name? Pantelis. Is it Pantelis or Pantelis? Pantelis. Pantelis. Yes. What is Pantalud? Pantalud is, uh, is, is kind of short for Pantelis. It's not really short, but it's a nickname that shows affection for a little kid. You wrote this book, uh, The Potato Peeler which is really the story of your life. And you mention a story that goes way back to 2,500 years ago. Uh, When you compare your own journey through life in America to the Odyssey. The Odyssey, of course, is uh, the story of uh, Ulysses, who came back from the war in Troy Troy. and took him 20 years to find his home. How does that apply to you? Well, the first similarity that I have, uh, I see, is it took him 20 years and took me 20 years. So the number 20 is the same. And he journeyed basically the whole known world at the time. And in a way, (laughs) I pretty much journeyed, if not the whole world, you know, a big chunk of it. So... He found himself in a number of impossible situations, you know, and he still managed to to overcome and come through unscathed. And I faced many impossible odds, so to speak, and I came through just fine. There is always a way, as I said, with proper preparation and flawless execution, nothing is impossible. You served in the military in Greece in... um, uh, 1967, 68, 69? 69 to 71. 69 to 71. Two years? Two years. You became, uh, what, a ranger? A second lieutenant in special forces and a paratrooper. That was a tough school, right, in in the military? Yes, Uh, the toughest. You can't get any tougher than that. That must have, at the time when you succeeded there, that must have given you a great sense of satisfaction. And confidence. And did that, that confidence, did that help you when you decided to move to a totally different country where you knew nobody, where you didn't speak the language, where you couldn't even read the letters? Nothing. No read or write or understand. But it didn't matter. That's what confidence comes in. And he took, to, to, to develop the confidence, you have to survive some rigorous training. And that's what my military service provided me with. When you came first here without knowing a single word other than how do you do, that was like like coming to China, wasn't it? (laughs) Well, uh, I could will be in another planet. Because if, if I'm compared the way I looked at my situation then with now, it's like I could have gone to Europe where my father was and it was the familiar environment. That will compare with America going to the moon. It's like backyard. Coming to America, it's like going to Mars. You know, if, if imagine somebody decides to go to Mars, they may come back or they may not come back. That's how I felt coming to America because America was on the other side of the world, you know, so far away. Europe was nothing. It's like the moon, you know, we, we, we've been there and done that. But Mars is a different story. Um, you went to school in Kansas initially to learn English? I went, I showed up at the University of Kansas because the University of Kansas had 
an annex for foreign students. It was called, was called the Intensive English Center for foreign students. It was part of the University of Kansas, but uh, you, you're not a, a student at the University of Kansas, but you are learning English in order to be admitted to the University of Kansas once your proficiency was good enough. When you told family members and friends in Greece that you were going to go to Kansas, what did they say? <laughs> Well, uh, they, they guarantee me that I ain't going to be able to get the visa. I ain't going to get anywhere. Uh, I need to get some good sense into my head, you know, and my Uncle Pete tried to do that. They call me lazy, uh, daydreamer, uh, pie in the sky, you name it, I heard it. Uh, and, but I brushed off everybody and I kept focused on what I wanted to do. The title of the book is uh, The Potato Peeler, and that refers to um, one of the many, many jobs you have held. You, one of the many jobs you had to, to uh, right. have here, uh, because it took you those 20 years to, to um, become what ultimately everybody would agree is a success. Why did you pick The Potato Peeler? For a number of reasons, maybe a couple, at least a couple of reasons. First, it's an easy title to remember, and it's a kind of attention grabber, I think. And second, it has something to do with my life. But you, you were asked by your employer at the time to, uh, here's this sack of potatoes, please peel them, and put them in this bowl of water. And, um, and, and he left you with that, and then after, what, an hour, you walked back About into an hour, room, yeah. And you told them, I'm done. I said, finito. Finito is like Italian, in Greece, you know, for Finnish we have finito, you know what I mean? And that's the only word I knew, and I'm moving my hands like this, you know, that means I'm done, finito, you know. And when he checked the sack and went back and saw the pit potatoes peeled, you know, uh, he said something to me very emphatically, which I didn't know whether he was very happy or very upset. I didn't know which one. And when I asked my roommate to go downstairs and ask him what he said earlier. My roommate comes back, he walks into the room, you know, with a smile from ear to ear, you know, and tells me exactly what Mr. Steyer said. And here is what I remember my roommate interpreting Mr. Steyer's words or expression. He said, damn, you are the fastest potato peeler I have ever seen. <laughs> and I felt good about it. I felt that this country appreciates performers. And, and my f very first boss uh, expresses amazement for my performance. I'm in, the, in a good place. I'm in a good company. And they gave me a, a, a big shot of confidence. And that phrase, potato peeler, kind of stuck in my mind. And I liked it. The more I was thinking about it, you know, the more familiar I can relate to it. You know? And so when I decided to pick uh, uh, a title, that came on top, even though I was considering half a dozen other titles. Uh, today you own, a, an, uh, in Texas, a, a state inspection. Right. But you treat, you're treating that still as if you were the potato peeler, right? You do the same kind of attitude in that work? Yes. Good service, clean place. I offer them free drinks, uh, soft drinks and bottles of water for free while they, they wait. You don't change it. If you per, if you are a performer, you're a performer, no matter what you're tackling with. And you have reached this point where, where by every account, you are a success. You have written in your book that uh, you have money in the bank. You don't have any debt. You don't owe anybody anything. You don't even carry any credit cards on you. Uh, you have only one debit card and um, uh, you are your own independent uh, man to meet that target that was a long struggle of hard work wasn't it correct and you learned your confidence in getting there in your military years correct what would you tell people who also would like to to put a target in front of themselves what how would you encourage them don't ask anybody Ask yourself. It's a, a, an inward thing. If you ask somebody else, you lose control of your destiny. 
because your point of view depends on where you stand. Your angle is within you. So you need to dig deep inside yourself and decide for yourself what you want to do in your life. And once you find that purpose in life, like Stephen Jobs mentioned in his keynote speech in 2005 at Stanford University, you need to pursue it relentlessly and you need to ignore all the noise of other people's opinion because they, their angle is not in the same angle as you have. You know what you're looking at. You know what you need to do. You are the captain of your ship. If you let somebody else be the captain, boy, you're going to be everywhere and nowhere. If you ask how much it's going to cost you, you are not willing to pay the price. Anyone who can put their dream into words and, and knows, you know, this is who I am. This is what I want. If they really focus, if they really do what you just say, will they always succeed? No. Nothing is guaranteed in this life. The only guarantee is when you're six feet under the ground. You know, you're not going to win nowhere. Once you are above ground, quantum mechanics take over. Chance and probability play an important role, but you have the ability to affect chance and probability, to work in your favor. Nothing is for sure in advance, but if you persist, you're going to get there. So they may fail. Failure may, may come their way. Good. Failure is good if you learn from it. If you learn from it, you are not going to repeat it. As Clement Stone said once, he said that failure is the other side of the same coin. Success is one side, failure is on the other, but it's one coin. And when you keep going failure after failure and you learn from it, eventually you're going to succeed. That's when perseverance kick in and it's a natural law. It's the, the, the survival of the fittest, that the fittest thrive and the rest just survive. The book is The Potato Peeler written by Paul Rackman, originally in Greek, named Pantelis Rachmadidis. Thank you for being our guest. Thank you for having written such a wonderful book. Well, thank you very much for having me.